for the for the worship of the Lord, that we meditate in a few scriptures and we worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. As we just read in Psalms 95, He is the rock of our salvation. And we were reminded again this morning, it says, Psalms 95, O come, let us sing unto the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with song. For this morning's meditation, shall we all turn to Revelations chapter 4. We read few verses there. Revelations chapter 4, we read verse 10 and 11. Revelations chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. Shall we all read together? Verse 10, the four and the twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crown before the throne, saying, The word worthy, O God, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were to be. We also read from the same Revelation chapter 4, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And also we continue to read verse 12, also saying, the same chapter, uh, sorry, chapter 5, verse 12, saying, With a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and it, and verse 13 as well and every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such are in the sea and all in them heard i say blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever so we just sang a song the majesty how great majesty the king of kings and the lord of lords and he is in our midst and we're going to meditate how we can worship this great king who sits on the throne. And how also we see in verse 10 of uh, Revelation 4 says, the four and twenty elders fall down before him. So there is nothing that is above him. Everything is below him. And they, they cast their crowns down. Means they felt that they are unworthy to have the crown before that king. And they fall prostrate worshiping the Lord. Shall we pray? Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this wonderful time that we gather in your word to come to your throne of grace to worship and adore you. Lord, to magnify thy great name, O Father Lord, thou art the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, as I stand before thy children, I am not unworthy, but nothing changed. I'm not worthy to stand here, Father, but Lord, yet according to your and mercy, that has given me the great privilege to bring that word unto your children. Empty my heart, enlighten us, speak to us, and enable us to worship you in the way that you want us to worship you. Give me all glory and honor. And often you come here to humble the elder and pray in your name. So, as we just read in Revelation, how great this King of Kings, verse 11, 4 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and were created. So it gives a, a complete picture of who we are here to worship. It, it, it shows the supreme power, the supreme majesty of God. That, the, that, there is, that, uh, that he is the only one, the Lord, is worthy to be praised. If you turn with me to John's Gospel, who we are talking about, what is so great about this God, that we are here to worship him. I just want to go quickly to a few verses before we worship him. John's Gospel, chapter 10, we read verse 8 and 9. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 8 and 9. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Here, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, here he is giving us, uh, 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 he's talking about a parable to his disciples, to the multitude, 
talking about what a shepherd is. Here he's saying that I am the door. Without me, no one can enter into the kingdom of God. I am the door, not a door. I am the door. Without me, there is no way to enter into the kingdom of God. Without my, me, there is no way of salvation. He is telling us, through me, you are saved today. You have the salvation because I was the door. You entered into the door so that you would be saved. This is the great king of kings, the Lord of lords, who's sitting on the throne. It's humbled himself for you and for me to give you that salvation. Secondly, he also says in the same word we read, and shall go in and out and find pasture. If you turn with me to Psalms 23, very famous, wise King, uh, wise Solomon, uh, David writes about Psalms 23 because he's a shepherd. David knows exactly what a shepherd is. He writes in the verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. This gay king of king, not only the, the, the savior of our soul, he's also the one that feedeth us. He's also the one that gives us the green pastures. He's our provider. Not just the thing that sitting on the throne. He became an access for us. Now he became a provider for us. That's what David is saying. I don't, I don't, I don't need anything because he's my shepherd. Because the shepherd knows even the sheep know when there is a shepherd the sheep don't need to worry about anything. Because the sheep is an innocent creature that doesn't know anything. He just follows whatever the shepherd does. So the, the, the sheep as we are, we have a focus that is Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's saying, not only I'm the door for your salvation, but I'm also your provider. So thirdly, then we see in verse 11, so, uh, John's gospel chapter 10 verse 11. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd given his life for the sheep. Here we're talking about the good shepherd. The Lord Jesus Christ is saying there is two different things we, have, we see in this chapter. Once we see a good shepherd and then we see an hireling shepherd. He talks about the difference between a good shepherd and a hireling. If you see in verse 13 he says, uh, 12, but he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not see the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. What does the hireling does? The minute when he sees a trouble, minute when he sees there is this, uh, a problem, he flees away. He leaves the sheep scattered. The devil comes and scatters the sheep. But the Lord is saying, I am the good shepherd that I am laying down my life to protect you. I lay down my life for your soul. That's what King David in Psalms 23, he says again. Though I walk through the valley of shadow, let's see that. Um, Psalms 23, because David is a shepherd, so he knows. Psalms 23, verse 4. Yeah, verse 4. He says, Ere though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For the word with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It's not, he's a gate. He's a door for our salvation. He is our provider. Now he's our good shepherd that lays down his life for us. So that you and I don't fear the evil that is out there. The world may come and scare us. The, de the death, the sickness may come and scare us. The world may leave us. The riches may leave us. That we might think can protect us. The, the, the resources of this world may disappear. When, this, when, the, when the fox comes, it will try to scatter the sheep. It will try to scatter you and me. But here the Lord is saying, I will lay down to protect you. I will lay down my life for you. What a great love. What a great uh, matchless word to describe. There is no word to describe this sacrificial love. The Lord Jesus Christ has for you and for me. King David knows that. That's what he's saying. I do not worry even though I walk through the valley of death. Today we might be walking through many valleys of death. We do not know what's around us. But we don't fear. Because he's our good shepherd. He is our good shepherd that is with us, the rod, and his God, and it's, it comforts us. What a great God that we have in our lives. 
in Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage against to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry above Father. Now he has given us the spirit of adoption, where we cry above Father. Now if you see in the same chapter, uh, in John, John's Gospel, uh, if you see from verses 15 onward, we see, 15 it says, As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father. Then we see in verse 16, and other sheep I have, which are, um, and verse 17, it says, Therefore that my father love me, because I lay down my life. And verse 17, it also says, The commandment I have received of my father. Then we go back to verse 25, it says, um, verse 20, it, it goes on, it says in verse 29, it says, My father. And in verse 30, it says, I and my father. Here he's showing the oneness with the father. That he and his father is one. He is the beloved of the father. Who is the creator of all is one. But then we see something different in John's gospel. The same chapter, verse 12. The same uh, book of St. John's gospel. And we see in chapter, yeah, chapter 20. Now we see the death of Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was crucified. In John's Gospel, chapter 20, we see the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. When we come to chapter 7, uh, 9, 20, verse 17, this is, that is a very simple thing, but it, it makes so much importance here. It says, Jesus said unto her, Mary Magdalene, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. You see that? Not ascended to my father. Now follow that. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to my father and your father. It's no more my father. It's no more I and my father one. It's no more it's me and my father alone. Now he says, my father and your father. He has transformed as you and me as one in him. This king of kings has shared his father, his father's love that he had for him, for you and for me. What a sacrificial love it is. In before the death of Lord Jesus Christ, he continuously says, my father, my beloved, and I and my father are one. Now, but once he is resurrected, when he's ascending to the father, he is giving us the key to his kingdom, stating that he is your father as well, as mine. He's giving us the same privilege to call the God the father as our father, which we did not have it before the death of Lord Jesus Christ. And it says... I, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. What a great privilege it is for us. Who are we that we are so mindful of that he has came down, died on the cruel cross of Calvary, shedding his precious blood to share his kingdom with you and with me. He's not only the God of, uh, he's not only the door for us of salvation. He's not only the protector for us. He is not only the lamb, the, the good shepherd that laid his life for you and for me. Now he has shared his kingdom with you and me. This gay king of kings. What a great love it is. That he has given us through his blood. That's what we read in Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. It says um, 13. Every creature which, oh, I'm sorry, it's in 9, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof. Thou wast slain, has redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests. We shall reign on earth. So, who we are now? Our innocent sheep, a naive sheep. That was scattered. We also see uh, in uh, Matthew's Gospel 18, I believe, it talks about the, the lost sheep. How Jesus left the 99, went back to that one sheep. The good shepherd goes after that one sheep to bring it back to the fold, to give his kingdom to us. And also we see in uh, uh, Isaiah 49, I think Isaiah 49, it talks about even a mother forgets her child. I believe it's Isaiah 49. 
I'm not sure if it's the worst. But anyway, I, I, 49, 16, 16. I, I hear 60. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I hear 63. She will not forget her son. She will not even forget that one sheep. That's the greatness, the majesty of her king. Before one thing, I want to close before one thought. If you also see in John's Gospel, chapter 11, we see about Lazarus. Lazarus was sick when Lord Jesus Christ heard that Lazarus is sick. He delayed going there in two days. And after he goes into Judea, in Judea, we see Lazarus dead. He was thinking in the tomb. So God says to, to Lazarus, in verse 25, he says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. In verse 44, in same John's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 44, he says, and he that was dead came forth bound hand and <coughs> foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, loose him and let him go. He has loosened us from the shackles of death. He has loosened us from all the bondage of this world. And he has gave us the freedom. So this great God is in our midst. So let us take this time very seriously. If these things, if he, God, again, here it says in the same 25, God, John 11, 25, he that believeth in me, though he, he were dead, yet he shall not see. Do we believe so? Do we have that experience that he is our true living friend? Then, as we said, as we read in Revelation chapter 5, then it becomes true. Then we can say, the word worthy, O Lord, in Revelation chapter 4, 11, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things for thy pleasure they are and they are true. May the Lord help us speak to us and, and may that we may worship him in truth and in spirit.